The universe is described as space-time which pertains to matter and atoms. Some people ask how did space-time come into existence without space or time? That's like asking how did matter come into existence without matter? This is because people confuse absolute space-time with material-based space-time. People usually think of absolute space or time, which refers to the existence of an invisible abstract force that exists without matter or atoms. However, the space-time used in science is completely based on the motion of material things. This kind of space-time came into existence and can't exist without matter. The fabric of relative space-time is entirely based on matter. No space, no time. And then, there was light. Suddenly, a tiny speck of light appears. It was infinitely hot. Inside this tiny fireball was all of space. This was literally the beginning of time. During this period of inflation, everything grew by 60 E foldings. After this short-lived inflation epoch, the universe has continued to expand and has become a dense soup of particles about a billion degrees Celsius. That's roughly a million times hotter than the sun today. So hot that matter and energy are essentially the same thing. Our universe soup is called the photon baryon fluid because it's made of mostly photons and baryons, with a dash of electrons. Photons are the light particles which carry the energy of radiation. They travel in the form of waves. Short wavelengths carry high energy, long wavelengths carry less energy. When a photon is radiated away, it retains information about the source, such as its temperature, direction, and even its chemical composition. They carry this information until they interact with matter, which means that the photons we detect today provide us with the history of their origins. Baryons include protons and neutrons, which make up the nucleus of the atom. The atom is the fundamental building block for all matter. The simplest atom, hydrogen, requires one electron orbiting a single proton. But because the cosmos is so small and hot, the photons are energetic enough to blast electrons out of orbit. Thus, no atoms are formed, and nothing matters. The universe pretty much stays as this hot cosmic soup for a while, so let's fast forward. It is now 380,000 years later. As the universe expands, it stretches the wavelength of photons, resulting in a distribution of energy across space. The dispersion of this energy has caused the cosmic soup to cool to about 3,000 degrees Celsius, roughly half the temperature of the sun today. Since the photons are traveling with longer wavelengths, they are not energetic enough to scatter off electrons in orbit. The photon baryon fluid has evaporated. Let there be light. And matter. This instant is recognized as the surface of last scattering, the first light of the cosmos, a snapshot of the young universe. Photons can now move much longer distances and carry the information about this time further. Hundreds of seconds after the Big Bang, it was too hot for electrons to join atomic nuclei to make atoms. Instead, the universe consisted of a swirling sea of subatomic matter. A few seconds after the Big Bang, it was hotter still, hot enough to overpower the forces that usually hold protons and neutrons together in atomic nuclei. Further back, microseconds after the Big Bang, and the protons and neutrons were only just beginning to form from quarks, one of the fundamental building blocks of the standard model of particle physics. Further back still, and the energy was too great even for the quarks to stick together. Physicists hope that by going to even greater energies, they can see back to a time when all the forces were one and the same, 